We're going to be using electromagnetic theory that's taught in college physics. A good source for this material is the Feynman Lectures on Physics. In the 1800s, many scientists were conducting experiments on electricity and magnetism. The experimental evidence was famously summarized by James Clerk Maxwell in 1860 with four equations. Today they are usually taught in this form. The reason Maxwell's equations are taught is that many jobs are available to people that understand them. Besides electrical and electronic engineering, many parts of medicine, chemistry, and warfare depend on understanding electric and magnetic fields. They're part of the bedrock of physics and of our modern society. Maxwell introduced fields as mathematical constructs to allow the existing experimental evidence to be explained. This was a break from Newton's vision, and it led to the amazing prediction of 1860. Doing simple math on Maxwell's equations leads to wave equations for electric and magnetic fields in empty space. When Maxwell predicted the existence of radio waves, Scientists didn't know how to make them, and some even thought they would never be useful. By 1890, radio waves were routinely being used for communications, and tools designed with Maxwell's equations were everywhere. The solution of the wave equations produces traveling electric and magnetic waves that are always perpendicular to the direction of travel. I can add little arrows to show the direction of the electric field. In this picture, the wave travels along the z-axis and the electric field is perpendicular along the x-axis. If we move to three dimensions, then you can see that the magnetic field B is perpendicular to the electric field and along the y-axis. This is one possible orientation. There's a second orientation with the electric and magnetic fields swapped. That's all the possibilities. EM waves have only two modes of polarization. The wave equations predict another feature of our world that many physicists noticed, but no one could figure out. In order to satisfy the wave equation, radio waves must have a fixed relationship between the frequency f and the number of waves per meter in the x, y, and z directions, kx, ky, and kz. The relationship is given by this formula. The constant c is the speed of light, which does not vary from observer to observer. That's completely different from sound waves and water waves, where the relationship depends on how fast you're moving relative to the wave. This was the key observation that Einstein used to develop his special theory of relativity, which is another great story. We aren't telling that story, but we do need to know that frequency and wave number are related by the fixed constant known as c, the speed of light. Still, with all these successes, Maxwell's field theory had a major problem. It allowed objects to mysteriously begin moving when no energy was being applied, thus breaking the conservation of energy principle. During the 1800s, conservation of energy had become another part of the physics bedrock, as thousands of people failed at building perpetual motion machines. Physicists realized that the fields themselves had to have energy in them. The density of that energy is given by this formula. Now, once you allow the fields to contain energy, you have to decide how much energy is flowing when the field moves. This is expressed as a flux, which is the energy flowing through a unit area and a unit time. Physicists in the 1800s worked it out to be E cross B. The two ideas you need to remember are, one, the fields transport energy and contain energy, and two, there's a fixed relationship between the frequency and wave number. Now you have the background information from electromagnetic theory, statistical physics, and classical mechanics. In the next video, we'll use it to show that the black body radiation forces us 
into an ugly paradox.